Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden, Associate Minister at Pleasant Green. And uh, this is Lesson 9 for May the 2nd, 2021. We begin a new unit today, Unit 3, entitled Courageous Prophets of Change. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Speak Truth Boldly. Our devotion reading is taken from the first epistle of John, uh, chapter 3, verses 23, and uh, chapter 4, uh, verse 3a. Also, uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 19 through 22. Our background scripture is taken from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 22, verses 1 through 40. And we'll be studying today... Uh, from the book of First Kings chapter 22 uh, verses 15 through 23 and also verses 26 through 28. Our key verse reads, Micaiah said, As surely as the Lord lives, I can tell him only what the Lord tells me. And that's taken from First Kings chapter uh, 22 verse 14 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to identify with Micaiah's boldness in declaring the word of the Lord. Secondly, to aspire to be like Micaiah when speaking the word of the Lord. And then thirdly, to commit to tell those in power what the Lord has said. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Thus Says the Lord. Our second outline is entitled, Ignoring the Truth. And then our third outline is entitled, Truth Will Prevail. And as always, we are always humbled and grateful to God, thankful to God for what he has done. And he is yet keeping us alive. And we certainly thank and praise God for all of you, the listeners and for your families and we certainly are keeping uh, keeping you all in prayer and we are encouraging one another even as we see the day uh, drawing nigh as always we encourage you to get a Bible uh, get your Bible and and be prepared to take some notes this is quite a lengthy historical account that we will be embarking upon today but we want to give you as much as we can to uh, at least demonstrate that there is a cost associated with serving the Lord. We don't want to uh, make you afraid or cause you to be fearful of that, that reality, but it is a fact and we will certainly demonstrate that through scripture today. Uh, but I want to get into this biblical context uh, I think it's important for us to understand uh, who's involved in this historical account uh, uh, so we can grasp uh, how the truth uh, is impacting uh, these two particular kings as we lift up this lesson today. But during the reign of Ahab in the northern kingdom there was war between Israel and Aram or Syria. Uh, with God's intervention, Israel defeated Aram twice, proving God's great power and might. Although Israel had dishonored God, God proved his faithfulness uh, to his covenant promise to never forsake them. I want you to look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 20 verses 1 through 34 for reference for that. Um, a third war with Aram was planned after a coalition of 12 kings including uh, Ahab and Ben-Hadad of Aram repelled the advance of Assyria into their territory so Ahab seized this opportunity to continue Israel's war with Aram uh, in order to reclaim one of its border cities. Ahab King Ahab entered an alliance with Jehoshaphat and the southern kingdom because of the marriage of Jehoshaphat's daughters, uh, Jehoshaphat's sons, 
and Ahab's daughter. The alliance prompted Ahab to invite Jehoshaphat to join the military campaign against Aram. Uh, King Jehoshaphat agreed with the condition that they would consult God before going into battle. If I can just pause here. This was something that was uh, customary. Uh, you will see this uh, in the Old Testament account, particularly David. Uh, King David did uh, the same thing. Uh, uh, Joshua. Uh, and so what these leaders would do, uh, uh, it was customary that they ask God. Uh, uh, prior to going into battle. Uh, that was significant uh, in terms of them desiring uh, as any uh, a military campaign we want to be able to win those wars or to be victorious and so they would consult God and this was the issue here uh, and so but the, the prophets uh, blind loyalty to Ahab aroused Jehoshaphat's suspicions uh, about their genuine ability to give uh, a true word from God and we're going to talk about that today about the will of God and uh, and how that impacts us even uh, uh, in our culture uh, but Jehoshaphat in turn as a prophet of the Lord and Micaiah became God's spokesman for the occasion so he would have been uh, that prophet uh, who we will uh, see his uh, encounter in this lesson today but we want to get right uh, uh, to this account uh, the first outline is entitled thus says the Lord this is taken from the book of first Kings chapter 22 verses 15 through 18 and I want to read this uh, uh, from the NIV translation we always encourage uh, 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 when we are uh, preaching and, and or teaching our Sunday school lessons to uh, engage the entire chapter uh, uh, 22nd chapter of uh, First Kings to uh, get a little bit more background on uh, where our context of our lesson takes place today this is uh, uh, the 15th verse from the uh, book of First Kings chapter 22 the Bible says when he arrived the king asked him Micaiah shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or not attack and be victorious he answered for the Lord will give it into the king's hand the king said to him how many times must I make you swear uh, to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord then Micaiah answered, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Didn't I tell you that he never prophesies anything good about me, but only bad? So Ahab is, is, is struggling here, uh, 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 with this word or with this prophecy uh, his expectation uh, uh, is to always hear something good you know that that's how we are uh, when we sit before uh, preachers and leaders and and the like we we want to hear about all of the good things that the Lord is going to do all the promises all of the tangible things all the temporal things that that will make our lives comfortable and it it's nothing uh, uh, particularly wrong with that uh, approach because God has made promises to us uh, and he made promises to Israel uh, uh, but uh, 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 as we will see in the Old Testament account there's a big word if you if you if you would just go with me uh, uh, as I make this point there's a big word in scripture that we uh, uh, don't uh, uh, we we don't want to address, and that big word is if. If uh, 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 Jesus says the same thing uh, in his relation to his disciples, if you if you keep my commandments, if you love me, uh, the Lord Yahweh was saying that to Israel in their day. Uh, if you walk up. Uh, before me if you do the things that I have commanded you to do 
that word is very is conditional and so uh, uh, this king here is not looking at the conditions of his conduct uh, 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 particularly as it relates to what his expectations are he just wants all of the good things uh, that 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 uh, can be said to him and Micaiah this prophet uh, uh, seems to have rattled him in a way that uh, he thought he was going to hear something good but he did not and so uh, to Jehoshaphat's credit in this displeasing alliance with Ahab he had the integrity to insist on knowing God's will regarding the uh, planned military attack against Aram. Uh, meanwhile Ahab was only interested in hearing prophetic voices that agreed with him uh, but I want you to look at Matthew, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 16 through 26. So as we deal with these two kings, it's important to know and to understand that King Ahab, uh, uh, he is tagged as an evil king. We should remember that. Uh, Jehoshaphat, on the other hand, is tagged as a good king. In other words, he, he uh, adhered to the to the law, to the things that God had given him to to do, that that God was uh, 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 might be pleased, but but Ahab was a different uh, uh, type of leader, and sometimes uh, uh, we we want the good from the Lord, but we don't want to conduct ourselves according to God's word, and so as we unpack this this lesson today we're going to be learning about God's will and so Micaiah is just the representative of God he uh, 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 as our outline suggests and uh, shares with us is thus says the Lord it doesn't say thus says Micaiah he's just the instrument by which the Lord is using but the will of God uh, uh, is going to be manifest in a way that Ahab and or Jehoshaphat will know that this is what the Lord is, is desiring to do. And sometimes as Israel should have clearly understood through the law, through the Mosaic law, that, that, that they would lose their military campaigns. Uh, uh, they would lose their military battles. They would lose the wars between their enemies if they did not adhere uh, uh, to the ordinances, to the commandments of God, and to his statutes, and to his precepts. And so uh, 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 this is a condition that they had entered into, and the Lord specifically told them, uh, if. And so we need to be concerned about that today because when we decide not to obey the Lord, then God's will will automatically compensate for that. God doesn't have to do anything new because he has already spoken out against evil, against unrighteousness. And so uh, uh, we, can, we can rest assured that, that God is going to respond simply because of his character. He has always, and all, uh, always been holy and he always will be holy. And sometimes when we, when we see God acting and maneuvering according to his will in our lives, we should remember that God's name is on the line, particularly when we are associating ourselves with God and ascribing that we are his people and his children and his sheep and his ministers and, and, and the like. And so God is going to respond. And so what Micaiah is sharing with Ahab is not good. And, and so, uh, but I was looking uh, more in the lesson to see if Ahab would be concerned enough to ask questions to see if he could change his way of living and change the things that he was doing in order to get a better outcome. I hope this is making sense. In our culture today, when we break fellowship with God through our unrighteousness and through our sinfulness, we repent and it restores that 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 fellowship and so uh, there is a way out if, if, if I can share that with you today we just have to be willing uh, to take it so Jehoshaphat took his stance as a worshiper of Yahweh and sought to hear from one of the Lord's true prophets in Israel 
Ahab sent for Micaiah, apparently the only man in Israel known as a prophet of the Lord, but because Micaiah spoke only the truth rather than flattery, his words usually displeased Ahab who hated him. And sometimes, you know, as ministers uh, uh, and leaders and even as children of God, uh, we have to be mindful of the fact that, uh, 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 let me just say this to you, the people know who you are. Uh, in terms of your relationship, particularly when you are testifying that you are a child of God. And when you enter the room and when you enter an environment, people are become people become agitated uh, because here you come again and here this person comes again and this is her stand and this is his stand. And the devil knows that, that you uh, bring that kind of, of truthfulness to the environment. And so you are hated. Jesus specifically uh, uh, talk to his disciples you can read this in John chapter 14 uh, he talked about with them if the world hates you remember that they hated me before they hated you and we know that they hated Christ because he was subject to crucifixion Right. And so this was not because they enjoyed or they liked his message. They hated him. They hated to see him coming. They hated to hear him speak. They hated to uh, uh, hear his teachings. And so they subsequently crucified him. And this is the, the this is the path, if you will, of all of the uh, all of us who say we are uh, belonging to uh, the body of Christ. And so. Ahab hated this man not because of, 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 of any particular thing that he had in his possession or, or, or some tangible things. He hated Micaiah because of his stance uh, 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 for the truth and for righteousness. And you will always experience this uh, in, in, in life. And so if, if you're around everybody, everybody likes you and, and, and everybody is patting you on the back, you might want to look at, look at how you are standing because the truth brings agitation. It brings persecution. And we're going to give you some scripture to support, uh, our, our findings here. So, um, the messenger, uh, uh, rather than flattery, uh, I'm sorry, the messenger, who summoned Micaiah on the king's behalf urged him to agree with Ahab's prophets and give him a favorable prophecy. In other words, join this lie, join this conspiracy, uh, 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 something that you know is not true. Just just go along with 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 what we are doing here, so this king King Ahab can be pleased. I want you to look at Psalm 50. Uh, go down to about about uh, verse uh, uh, 16 uh, uh, and and finish that psalm out and you will see you will see something there but because Ahab was known for his uh, uh, childlike tantrums when he did not, did not get his way this messenger may have assumed that he was doing Micaiah a favor uh, by preparing him for his meeting with Ahab so uh, Micaiah's response was one of a true follower of God and this is what he says as the Lord live what the Lord saith unto me that will I speak Micaiah was prepared to stand for truth even if it meant standing alone this is Christianity 101 this is something that we need to be prepared for every now and then you meet a traveler someone that who is uh, following the Lord, who is following the Word of God. Uh, and sometimes uh, God will cause you to experience and to, to live uh, uh, what, it, what, it, uh, what it means uh, 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 to be ostracized, to be criticized. God will let you experience these things. God will allow you to be lied on and, and, and talked about. Uh, and this, this is where uh, people begin to isolate you uh, uh, because they don't like how you stand. They don't like how you walk. They don't like how you talk. They don't uh, 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 like how you worship. Uh, and so we experience these things as a reality of life. But I, I, I understand that this is just, uh, uh, it's not Micaiah's fault. 
right? He should not feel guilty about his stand for the truth. And he does not need to compromise himself. I'm talking to somebody now uh, who is experiencing, uh, 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 perhaps you are uh, uh, thinking about compromising your, yourself because uh, people don't like you. But I would just encourage you to stand your ground uh, at all costs. Uh, and so uh, uh, Jesus should be your pattern. Jesus should be your model. Uh, 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 particularly if you are feeling discouraged about what you are experiencing. Let Jesus be your model uh, and, and just know that if it happened to him, that is going to happen to you. Question is asked here, what are the risks of seeking important advice from people who tell you only what you want to hear and we can see the risk as I pointed out to you earlier the risk is death that's the ultimate risk but we we, we have some other issues that we experience and you know uh, uh, perhaps you don't have the friends that you used to have but that's okay perhaps you don't have the relationship uh, that you used to have but that's okay uh, perhaps you didn't get the position because you wouldn't go along uh, 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 with with the with the norm uh, but that's okay uh, and so it, it, it happens this is how God makes us this is how God establishes us uh, to be who we are uh, uh, and, and, and it's too late in this day and in this culture for you and I to have an identity crisis about who we are we the children of God or we are not and so we have said and we have heard it said down through the years uh, uh, for God I live and for God I die well here it is here it is for Micaiah he is making a stand and he is going to pay the cost for that stand. So the risk uh, are always a, a, a part of our reality, but we do not need to be alarmed because there are risks. I want to give you some scriptures here that I want you to uh, 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 look at to help you. Uh, John chapter 15, Gospel of John chapter 15, verses 18 through 25. Gospel of John chapter 16 verses 1 through 4 and this is Jesus talking in both of these chapters here and this is not uh, intended to be all inclusive but at least it will put you on a path. Uh, I also want you to look at 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 through 5 and then 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 9. And so our second outline is entitled Ignoring the Truth. This is taken from 1 Kings chapter 22 verses 19 through 23. The Bible says, Micaiah continued, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the multitudes of heaven standing around him on his right and on his left. Verse 20, And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there. One suggested this and another that. Verse 21, finally a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. Verse 22, by what means, the Lord asked, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all his prophets, he said. And you will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. Verse 23. So now the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. I want us to understand something about this passage of scripture. Um, and I want to give you James chapter 1 as the Spirit of the Lord is reminding me to help us to understand that God allows, as I shared with you uh, earlier, uh, this encounter here uh, takes a spiritual tone uh, for Micaiah in this uh, a vision, if you will, that God has given to Micaiah. Uh, but I want you to understand that God has a way of allowing things to occur. I don't want us to think that God is complicit with evil. James chapter 1, as I shared with you, uh, part of your reference, there's no way 
God can be associated uh, with evil, but he does allow things. And this in this vision here, uh, God had given Micaiah a vision to substantiate his message to Ahab. Uh, the vision was not about the impending battle, but about the advice that Ahab and Jehoshaphat had received from Ahab's 400 prophets. Micaiah saw the Lord sitting on his throne with his angelic armies assembled around him. Right? This is in verse 19. So the conversation Micaiah described as having taken place has been interpreted both figurative, figuratively and literally. That's in verses 20 through 23. So if it is taken literally, then a lying spirit could not have uh, uh, been one of God's angels, but a demon or Satan himself. But more important is the point of the vision's revelation. Ahab's 400 prophets spoke with a lying spirit uh, which would lead to his death and defeat of his army in battle. Ahab had heard the truth from Micaiah and the choice was his. He chose to believe the lying spirit and inevitably uh, sealed his own death warrant. God's word is set before us daily we must choose whether to receive it uh, to receive and obey it I also want to give you Joshua chapter 24 but I want to talk about this uh, because uh, the outline is entitled ignoring the truth and this is where we are today uh, all of us have heard the word of the Lord at some point in time at least once and we have made decisions. Sometimes our decisions have been silent. And sometimes our decisions have been uh, audibleized or been vocal. Uh, we have declared that we're not going to do a particular thing. We are not going to obey the law. And so in this vision here, as we read here in this commentary here, uh, that Micaiah had already shared. Uh, with Ahab and with Jehoshaphat uh, of what the will of God was all about but God always gives us an opportunity right even today you're listening to me right now you're, sh you're sharing this I'm sharing this uh, message with you and we have the capacity to continue to listen so as to adhere or we have the capacity to turn it off. Uh, we don't want to hear it anymore. And those choices have consequences, good or bad, right? And so we have to understand that 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 if if we don't want to hear from the Lord, then we will obey the devil. If we don't obey the commandments of the Lord, you will obey the commandments of the devil. It's just that simple. We are all infused, right? Our conduct is infused. We say things. Uh, we let the first thing that come up come out. And so, uh, uh, but Micaiah here is, is helping these individuals to understand what the will of God is. And so this, uh, 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 being able to interpret uh, even today, uh, uh, what is infusing me to talk to you today or who is infusing me to talk to you and one of the reasons that I, I share so many scriptures uh, 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 when I'm uh, uh, preaching and or teaching the Sunday school lesson is so I can take the focus off of me and put it back on the word of, of the Lord this is the context by which I am speaking to you so uh, 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 Micaiah is, 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 is just the, the the messenger and so as I said here Ahab had heard the truth right he had heard the truth he had been told from Micaiah and the choice was his right so God gives us an opportunity to hear the word of truth he has dispatched messengers all over this world present day who are preaching literally 24 hours a day, right? 24 hours a day, the word of God is being uh, 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 administered to hearers all over the world 
and what these represent should represent to us and what it certainly represents to God is an opportunity. I sent the word to you, saith the Lord. I sent my prophet. I sent my messenger. I sent my spokesperson to you time and time again, right? But we make decisions about I'm not ready yet or I'm not coming to the Lord or I'll come when I get ready. And so in the meantime, things happen, right? Life doesn't stop until you make up your mind or the devil doesn't stop. Death doesn't stop until you, uh, 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 it won't stop because you haven't made up your mind. People are continually to quit this walk of life, either in a relationship with the Lord or without one, either, either uh, uh, repenting of their sins or not, even uh, uh, confessing uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins, or they are not. Right? These are, as we asked you earlier about the risk, if I can just put a word in front of that, uh, these are eternal risks. Right? Ahab is making a d eternal decision right this will impact him even when he quits his walk of life right God's word is truth and we need to remember that question here is what can cause us to become dull of hearing you know when I read this immediately the Spirit of the Lord was reminding me about repetition. Sometimes we get dull of hearing if we continue to hear something, right? It, it, if, if, particularly if we've heard it before. Well, I've heard that message already. Well, I've heard that preacher already. Well, I've heard her already. I've heard that already. I already know that already. And so repetition that causes us sometimes to become dull, right? We just dismiss it because we've heard it before we don't want to go to church anymore because we went before right we don't want to hear the word of the Lord we don't want to hear that preacher because we know what they're going to say so repetition is a good thing but sometimes it's a deterrent it sometimes it, it causes us to become dull right we don't want to adhere to what is said and repetition uh, uh, these emphasis here and as I've said uh, uh, many times, whenever a prophet shows up in the Old Testament, right, it was never good. And Israel was the same way. Even as we read about Ahab, he's complaining uh, about Micaiah because of repetition. He knows what Micaiah stands for. He's heard him before and he hates him because of repetition. And so now he finds himself in a place of being dull, right? He doesn't want to hear. But God has already spoken, right? So we need to be mindful of this. I want to give you 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 through 15, and also 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. All of these points in this lesson. Uh, have a, a biblical reference and we should follow that and when you find and you research these uh, scriptures that I'm giving you there are going to be more references and there are going to be more references and so you're going to find yourself going from the New Testament back to the Old Testament and when you get to the Old Testament it's going to send you back to the New Testament in other words there is no loophole it speaks for itself simply because God does not change. His character is such that he does not change. He never has and he never will. Our last outline is entitled Truth Will Prevail. 1 Kings chapter 22 verses 26 through 28 again from the NIV translation. The king of Israel then ordered, Take Micaiah and send him back to Ammon, the ruler of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, This is what the, king's, what the king says. Look at this spirit. 
put this fellow in prison and give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely. Let me translate that for some of you today. These are the, the, the byproducts of you standing for the truth. People will put you in positions that are uncomfortable for you. They will uh, uh, cause you to be uncomfortable because they have what they think is authority over you. Uh, uh, they, they have the capacity to make life difficult for you. Just because Ahab, King Ahab does not like this word, but he has authority. You see, he has the authority to be good. He has the capacity to do something good, but his infusion his infusion is from Satan. His infusion is from the enemy. And because he will not recognize the word of God, he has no other choice but to serve the devil. And the devil is now positioning him to do harm to a prophet of God. I said this some years ago. No Christian should be attacking another Christian. Shouldn't be attacking anyone, right? But we are brothers and sisters in Christ. How do you think God looks upon us as brothers and sisters in Christ? We all are, 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 are purchased by the same blood, but yes, we are harming one another. We are trying to get ahead of one another. So we, we, should, we should be different than the world, right? But this guy, because he has authority, the authority that Ahab has as king was given to him by God. But look how he is using it. Put this prophet in prison. Don't give him anything but bread and water. Look at verse 28. Micaiah declared, If you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added, Mark my words, all you people. You know when the Lord has said something. And I, I, I can imagine this didn't do nothing but throw gasoline on the fire of Ahab who was already hot, who was already angry, who was already full of, of hatred. And Micaiah says to him, if you ever return safe. Sometimes, this is something that we need to understand. You know, these threats are idle threats. Sometimes people think that because they have authority that they are the only authority. This is a mistake. Right? Ahab thinks if he puts this man in prison, he's going to go on just like the word of the Lord hadn't been spoken over his life. He's going to go on and be prosperous. He's going to go on and do other things to other people. He's going to go on because he's king. He's got it. You know, he's got this and he's got that. But Micaiah is declaring something here. We need to take note. He said, if you, if you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added, mark my words, all you people. So he's confident. This guy doesn't understand. King Ahab does not understand who has spoken. He has no reverence for the God who gave him the authority. So I'm confident. It doesn't matter where you put me. It won't change what the word of the Lord has said. This should be good news to those of us who are going through and who continue to go through at the hands of those who are over us. Their time is limited, right? God is not going to permit you, right? Because he has something for you to do to be incarcerated or to be locked up so you can. And when you lock somebody up, particularly a prophet, you're, you're cutting off their success you think you cut you're cutting off their uh, uh, assignments from God you're cutting off their progress right if you incarcerate this man and you don't give him anything but 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 bread and water then surely you'll nullify who he is and what the Lord has given him to do but Micaiah says you're wrong 
right? Micaiah says, in essence, you're wrong. He said, if you ever, if you ever return safely, then I'm, I'm going to say the Lord has not spoken to me or through me. You know what Micaiah is saying? I don't expect to see you again, ever. Because that's what the Lord said, right? You would meet your fate. But it's a learning process. And we have to pray. This is, I'm going to challenge you today, and this is something that I do re religiously, right? I want you to, uh, if you're going through at the hands of another, I challenge you to pray for your enemy. If, if you, and I, I do this uh, because I'm commanded to do it. When I know my enemy's name, I, I, I pray for them by name. I don't say, Lord, touch them. If it's a, I call her name or I call his name. We are required. I want you to look at uh, Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7, that Sermon on the Mount, right? We have to pray for our enemies, right? I know, as Jesus did at the cross, right? As Stephen did when he was being stoned in Acts chapter 7. He prayed for those who were stoning him. Jesus prayed, petitioned the Father concerning those who was crucifying him. And if you ever want to know how much you have grown as a Christian, your gauge will be how much do you pray for your enemy. That will tell you how much you have grown. Right? That will tell you how much you have matured in this walk with the Lord. Because you know, as Micaiah has said to Ahab, as a minister, as a child of God, because I have read the word of the Lord, I don't want anyone to be lost, even my enemy. Right? This is the love of God. Right? John 3.16 clearly says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. That's the hope. That's the assignment. That's the time limit that we have as evangelists. To share the word of God with people who we know according to the biblical account. Dying is, is only part of the equation. It is not all of it. And we have given, been given specific instructions about death. And we have been given specific instructions about hell. And we have been given specific instructions about the lake of fire. Right? So this is risky. This is costly. Uh, not just for the believer. But it's costly for the unbeliever. It's costly for those who will not accept the word of God. And as our outline shares with us. This last outline. The truth will prevail. And it's difficult sometimes waiting on the truth to come. But I share with you today, it will come. Because God said it would. He is not a man that he should lie. Right? If he said something, if God said something, it will come to pass. He is truth. Right? So we need to remember that. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this lesson today, for what it teaches us. We thank you for this historical account. And Father, I pray for the courage of each and every one of us that stands boldly to stand and proclaim the liberties of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to admonish all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But there is a cost. Father, we pray that you would encourage us today to continue to do what you have assigned at our hands. There will be an accounting of the things that you have given us to do. And we know that there are many trials and tribulations associated with standing for Jesus Christ. 
but he showed us the way. Christ demonstrated that he would be faithful to the end, even death on the cross. And as disciples, we pray for that courage today. We know there are many things going on in our lives, even in this pandemic. Father, we just thank you for being merciful and kind. Thank you for your goodness. We pray for each and every one that is sick, that is not feeling well, that is even low in spirit, maybe dealing with anxiety or dis, uh, being discouraged or whatever the issue might be. But we rebuke the enemy right now. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you for this lesson today, for it encourages us that your word will prevail. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.